Welcome to CSL, CSL Charlotte Center for Spiritual Living. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Wanda. And if this is your first time, we are delighted that you have chosen to join us today. With modern technology, we are extremely grateful for this opportunity to touch as many lives as possible through Zoom and Facebook and to share the wonderful happenings at CSL Charlotte. So please feel free to visit the site, cslcharlotte.org, put in a prayer request and subscribe. We add all our recordings to our website each week. The Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte is a new thought philosophy and community living in ancient wisdom based on the science of mind. This science of mind philosophy was developed in the early 20th century by the writer and lecturer, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Dr. Holmes was a man on a mission. He studied truths from all of the world's religious traditions and spiritual paths. Holmes had a fresh new way for us to look at ourselves and how we fit into our world. At CSL Charlotte, every philosophy is honored, every race, sexual orientation, and physical distinction. This is truly a diverse community. There are many paths to the divine. We can call it God, peace, great spirit, love, Allah, whatever you call it, that is your power and it resonates with you. You do not have to leave your philosophy or your nature of knowledge. You can join us anytime. We recognize and refer to many holy scriptures, such as the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, and the Bhagavad Gita, just to mention a few. We also tap into all of the ancient philosophies and philosophers. Our vision is to continue a spiritual community, preparing a succession of future leaders who can fully integrate, teach, and expose the science of mind principles, messages, and practices that strengthen the mind, body, and spirit of individuals. One of our aims is to create a highly collective consciousness for everyone in this community. We teach everyone the tools to do just that. So come and join us as we meet each Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So welcome everyone and enjoy our services as we celebrate this powerful being which lives deep within each and every one of us. So now I'll pass the mic back over to our illustrious, spiritual, amazing, deeply mind, body, spiritually integrated Reverend Rosedale Jones. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Wanda. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for being here for us today. It's just mm -hmm. fabulous. So happy birthday too. So everybody, welcome. Whether you're on YouTube or whether you're on our website watching our videos, just welcome. And also, I want you to be reminded that today happens to be, Ju no, it's not the 4th of July, but it's the 2nd. So be, we're going to wish you a happy 4th ahead of time so you can enjoy the rest of your weekend. Because I'm quite sure there's a lot of festivities going on for some. And I just want to make sure I always acknowledge you for having a happy time, whatever it is we're doing. So welcome to CSL Charlotte. And at CSL Charlotte, we are the mind, body, spirit center. Every aspect of all of us is always thought of and, and prayed on and done spiritual practices on and all of those wonderful things. Just remember, we are the mind, body, spirit, the whole of us. So with that, what we do in CSL Charlotte is we celebrate that powerful being within us. It is that power, it is that source, that energy that was put in us from day one, from whence we were born. So with that being said, let's open up with a spiritual mind treatment. And I'm going to open this one up with a powerful woman. Her name is Reverend Karen. Now, Reverend Karen is my buddy from way back. The first time we met, we had no idea we would be connected this way. Not only that, 
Uh, she's a healer, for a self-healer. She does all kinds of things with herself, and she uses all the tools that we have at our spiritual center. So with that being said, you are getting prayed for by a power woman who has all the healing that she has just gone through in the last two weeks. So that being said, Reverend Karen, go ahead and do that thing that you do. Oh, thank you, Reverend Rosedale, my sister in spirit and in, in the universal knowledge of oneness, the universal pleasure of self-care and self-care. And as we go into this talk today of pleasure and self-care, it's a celebration. As the 4th of July is a celebration of the nation, this is a celebration of us taking care of ourselves, being in pleasure with ourselves just as we are just who we are because we celebrate god when we celebrate ourselves when we are doing self-care we are self-caring the vessel through which god expresses itself and what better thing to do in life than to take care of the vessel through which god expresses itself which is each and every one of us and the pleasure in doing that is the honor honoring our creator honoring all and as we hear this talk today from Reverend Rosedale, she delivers such beautiful talks every single Sunday. And I know today is no different for each of us to take what she says and bring it out into our daily lives, to live it, to breathe it, to embrace it, and know that it is the word of God spoken through Reverend Rosedale right here and right now. And in this attitude of gratitude for CSL Charlotte and for all the beautiful people that make it what it is, that join together as a family, and for my being in gratitude for being part of this family and knowing this, this beautiful family that embraces each other, God, and all of us and ourselves as we do self-care. And we take pleasure in self-care and taking care of ourselves. We're taking care of everybody else in this whole wide world because that love and light comes from our hearts and it ripples out into this into this universe. And in this attitude of gratitude, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. And join me as, we leave, as I release this prayer into the universal law. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. Let every time we get together, I know it from our consciousness meeting that she, like she said, we are rippling out such blessings because if we don't have it in us, how can we give it to other people? That was powerful, Reverend Karen. Thank you so much for that prayer. So next on our platform is our, he's, yes, he's our leader, all right. He's the one that runs this place like a well-oiled machine. This is, uh, I was going to say Reverend Horace. Ah, he's so powerful. He, he got to know it. But anyway, Horace has come through it, okay? Horace has used all kinds of modalities, practices, and all kinds of wonderful things also. So we got two power hitters on our team this afternoon to actually do something for us. He's going to do a reading for us about self-care. And when he gets done, you're going to listen to this fabulous song because you know what? One of Horace's most important words, life, is his self-care. He's a super self-care addict. Oh, I love it. I love it. And see, this song that's going to follow is a chant. And when you get to listen to a wonderful chant, you get to memorize this stuff within yourself. So after listening to this powerful reading from Brother Horace, you will go into the song, I'm All I Need. Chant it. Go ahead, Horace, and make it do what it do. Thank you, Reverend Rosedale. And so in keeping with the theme about the pleasure and self-care, uh, self I want to direct your attention to this awesome um, reading, which is which came from Psychology Today, which is called, Are You Minimizing Your Own Happiness? Subtitle, How Your Emotion Regulation Style Can Limit Your Happiness. So, do you really feel truly happy despite the many good things in your life? Do you feel that moments of pure joy evade you? If so, you might have considered external changes that you could make to increase your happiness. 
Perhaps you have thought about reducing your work hours, taking up a new hobby, or buying a pet. It is probably unlikely that you have considered internal factors, such as how your own style of emotion regulation impacts on your happiness. What does it mean to regulate positive emotion? We continually regulate both our negative and positive emotions in order to achieve our goals or conform to societal expectations. Sometimes it is helpful to down-regulate uh, or dampen a positive emotion. For example, we may laugh uproariously at the joke our colleague tells us on the way to a meeting, but can quickly shift to a more somber mood as we enter the meeting room. When we upregulate positive emotion, we use strategies that increase the intensity of an emotion or prolong its duration. Upregulating strategies include sharing our emotion with others, anticipating a future event with pleasure, or fully enjoying a moment of pride after a job well done. A common way in which insecure, insecurely attached people pour cold water on their happiness is by allowing a positive emotion to drift to a negative thought. We have all done it. Instead of focusing on how wonderful it feels to be on a tropical beach, for instance, our thoughts drift to how big our bellies look in this position or how it would be better if there was just a little more shade. For insecurely attached people, positive emotions can also lead to negative rumination about past or future events. For example, we might remember how last year the weather changed and ruined the last few, few days of our vacation. Or we might think about how this vacation is, is all very well, but when we go home, we'll have a mountain of tasks to deal with. The way in which we regulate emotion is habitual. Therefore, a key step in striving towards increased happiness may be to consciously notice how you react to positive emotion. Do you keep good news to yourself because you fear that others will be envious of you? Do you tend to look for faults in positive situations because you can't quite believe that you deserve them? It may be important to acknowledge that sometimes positive emotions can lead to pessimistic thinking and to decipher what your internal models of positive emotion look like. What do you do or think that shuts down your happiness? A second step may be to consciously increase the use of upregulating strategies, thereby increasing the times when you feel happy. It takes practice to really focus on a positive feeling and to keep bringing your attention back when it wanders. Sharing your happiness with others can also lead to increased well-being, even if it takes courage to do so. Start by sharing your excitement and joy with people who you know care about you. Being happy may be a bit like exercising. The more we do it, the easier it gets. So I want to leave you with this quote from Rumi. Actually, your soul and mine are the same. We appear and disappear in each other. And so it is. Okay, take that nice deep breath. And as we breathe, I need to ask you to bring your attention to, did you actually chant, I, all I need? Because if you chanted that and you do it repeatedly, it becomes a habit. When it becomes a habit, you build this confidence within you that's uncanny. There is nothing that can do that for you. 
nothing that can bring you down other than you cleaning up that mind so that that body falls in line and so that spirit begins to be easily revealed to you. Think about chanting with your mind. I'm all I need to get by. And with that, remember, when you do things like that, you will find pleasure in being you. I do. I can't tell you what you will do. I should just rephrase that. Knowing my mantras, knowing my chanting, really gives me the benefit of any doubt that I may have before me. That's the pleasure of self-care. When I take my time and go someplace and spend that time with myself, chanting is powerful. That's just one of the many spiritual practices that we can use. So that being said, I invite you now to show such gratitude for all of our team members that show up here every single week and do what they do by remembering I'm all I need. Each and every leader, say that. Each and every congregant, say that. If you're on YouTube, say that. Because this talk was designed to help you get inside your mind. So with that thought, wiggle your fingers and your toes. And find yourself back into your space. Be empowered today. As you look around your space with such gratitude, but at the same time, you're looking around like a new person. Actually, I am a new person in this space. So maybe you feel that way. So, first thing I want to do is show big gratitude for our MC, Dr. Wanda, for being here and showing up on her birthday. And the next thing I want to do is give Karen a big hallelujah for that prayer she did to open us up with. Karen, you actually brought pleasure in self-care to life. So that all being said, again, the reading by Horace hit it right on the nose, especially when you heard him say, it's all about us bringing that joy to ourselves to make things work for us in our lives. So for those of you who have any things that you'd like to see work in your life, any type of healing, anything whatsoever, join our consciousness meeting. You will hear so much more about that in, in the service as we move forward. So with that, I want to get into what we do in this philosophy. First of all, self-care, it is phenomenal. It's a very, very important aspect of who and what we are and what we do as people. In this philosophy, I personally believe that there is 100% all of us located in the mind, the body, and the spirit. All three of those need their own special self-care. So when we combine all of that and make sure that self-care is done through us, as us, and for us, we become all that more powerful. I am all I need. Also, I also am very aware of the fact that there is no one thing about what we do. There is a wonderful thing. We have a big beautiful practice, which is called prayer. That's a very good self-care practice. But we also have a beautiful practice, which is called journaling. We also have a beautiful practice, which is called gratitude. And if you think about gratitude, you're taking care, you're taking pleasure. And so, because what happens is you, you're getting that self-care because you're smiling. Anything you feel gratitude for, you begin to smile. Now, if you don't believe that one, Think about something right now that you're grateful for in your life. 
and see dope cells in your body begin to change to make you feel self is happy because that's what self-care is about you heard Horace's reading when he talked about be happy and, and it's a practice that you fall into as you habitually get it I'm all I need I'm so grateful for my life. I'm so grateful for my children. I'm so grateful for this house. I'm so grateful for this studio. I am so grateful for life. And every time you say that word, I'm grateful, you are building yourself up. But how about this? Writing. When you write in your journal how many times, how many things you are grateful for, that's one of Horace's favorites. When you write down how, how every night for 10 times, I'm grateful for this, that puts you to sleep in a nice, nice way. So you get a very good thing when it comes to that. Now, how is pleasure and gratitude and pleasure and self-care really in, in mind in itself? It's through this. We have so many practices. Again, we have mindful eating, nutritious food. We have mindful fitness. We do that because when you move your body, all these wonderful cells begin to move around you and you definitely do feel your peace. The more peace you feel, the happier you are. The more peace I feel, the happier I am. I can think of this story right now. I'm, once I was, years ago, when I first started into this, and I say this because it's a philosophy. It's not a dogma. And we can do just about anything as long as we know in the spiritual truth for ourselves. Or it, we know that this thing says, identifies us. It's our divine identity. So we have our very, our big truth. And that truth within us, back in the day, and I can't say it enough, I remember when I was so stressed out one night and I said to myself, how do I find my higher self? I didn't know enough to trust somebody to tell me with knowing about personal, you know, pleasure, being in pleasure, you have to be focused on self-care. So self-care is one of the beautiful practices. So when you engage in these practices, like eating properly, like taking care of your health in different ways, whether you use supplements, whether you do whatever versions of things you need to do, whether you sit and decide that I'm just going to sit here and I'm actually doing nothing, whether you decide I'm just going on vacation, you are doing such goodness for yourself to really actually make sure it's all good. Everything just makes sense for you. So I even have to say that I give big time respect to Reverend Karen. She's a person who I've seen go through in just these last three weeks, the last three years even, I've seen her use different modalities to self-care, to build her to where she is. And she is just as vibrant and happy as all get out. And I so love it. You know, what I have to use examples of people that I know I can use because other people <laughs> may not like that. But I know what I can say that about her. I know that I can say that about Horace. And so that proves that self-care is pleasurable if you make it a habit. And the habit that was really, really wonderful was the habit that Horace gained and showed me. And I saw through his life that habit worked in him. Habit works in me. But I know for a fact that life works through me. Yes, I am so grateful that we're getting a chance to really get into this space to make sure it's all good. And with that being said, I did take pleasure in my own self-care today, just in case, just to be ready for this, these moments like this. So I want to tell you about the fire when I'm talking about self-care. See, the fire is something that changes meats and foods into a delicious meal. The fire is turns metal into a whole new form. The fire puts a diamond in there and burns it into, into it's nice, a whole new person. The fire transforms. You got to go through the fire. I'm going through the fire today. But self-care helps me make it to the other side of this whole society of this whole thing that we're going through right now we are in, in actually transforming into 
from from going from the internet to coming live here today. So with that being said, guys, you got to know pleasure I found to get here to do what I do. So with that all being said, let's just keep going and keep on bearing with it because there's a couple of things that just happened. So it is my duty, my duty, my duty, my duty to find pleasure in self-care because every time I decide to take that time for myself, I give myself so much more strength, so much more power. And in that power that I give to myself, I am able to state something and it happens for me. I said to myself the other day, oh no, Isaiah is doing great. He came to me to say to me that I don't really like my job. I don't really like it. So anything that bothers me and I put it on to inside of myself to make sure I first do my self pleasure practice. Once I do that in my self-care practice, I then decide he's going to be okay. But it doesn't happen until I've done that self-care practice and I believe that I'm feeling better. Then the thing I sprout out is good. So I basically sprouted that I believe in the divine identity of Isaiah. And whatever happens to him, he will come through this. Well, he came home from work that same day feeling happier than he did when he left for work. It's important that you feel good before you heal, try to heal someone else. It's important that I feel good before I even pray for you. It's important that I have health inside of me so I can pray for your health. It's important that I have love inside of me that I can pray for your having love inside of you. All of this works out. It works out for all of us. So that being said, I'm taking us into a long thinking, and I want you to just take a moment, not even 30 seconds, I'm sorry, and I want you to think of something that you have done this week that shows that you did something for, take for, for your own self-care. Whatever that may be, seconds should be up. Mm -hmm. Now from this, remember this, self-care brings on self-compassion, courage, confidence, and all the things that you basically need every day to get you to where you want to go, to really get you started. So as I wrap up, I want you to realize that self-care is going to be a really great thing for you this month this week because you are getting ready to go into the holiday weekend, especially the, the festivities. So as your festivities go in, remember to think about where we live. We live in a country called the United States and it's America. And when we take that self-care, instead of bad mouthing it and yelling about it and saying all the negative things we can say about it, let's remember we do have pride in a country and wherever we live and wherever we stay. So what I'm bringing you to is this next song as I wrap up. And it's called My America. And as you think about that, realize what this artist is trying to tell us. Because when you like everything, when I like everything around me, my surroundings and everything whatsoever, it does help me in pleasure of self-care. That said, I'm going to start with the next song. My America, what a beautiful thought to have because we're in a place, we're living here, it's our surroundings, it's our, it's our environment. So let's take that time and also remember America as we have our self-care and as we have our families, as we have everybody around us and be taking pride in everything we do this week.
Yes, we know that a community that prays together stays together. Thank you so much, Mo, for those numbers that we do, and you always do that. We love what you do when you send out all these prayers to all our people in our community. So on that note, what we do next is we basically talk about birthdays right about now. And if you have a birthday and you know your birthday, I don't. And if you have a birthday, basically put it in chat. And if you're here with us in the studio, you would pretty much make sure we get your birthday. So that all being said, and if you're on YouTube, you can just put the day and your month, and that's all we need. So that said, the next thing I want to do is make sure that each and every week we get somebody to say thank you, happy birthday to. Mm -hmm. So we did wonders last week, mm -hmm. didn't we? Yes, we mm -hmm. sure did. So that all being said, let's move on. So now I would like to thank all of our platform for always no matter what happens with us we have had we've been here for three years together and technology has thrown us and and we have made it through in fact that was our fire we'd walk through the fire and we're a pure center still we're coming out strong so i'm so grateful for every last one of our our platform people because we make it through we do and it all works out well and now uh, i also want to thank uh Wanda for doing the MC. I also want to thank Reverend Karen, you, you beautiful soul, for coming in and doing your prayer. And that reading, Horace, was just awesome and phenomenal. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And Timmy P, the announcements, always informative, always spot on. <clears throat> so thank you, thank you, thank you. And that all said, it's now time for that last and final song. Now, you know how it is when we are uh, in the, the end of our days where we're telling ourselves the day is almost over and now what we want to do is we want to just get comfortable, get relaxed in ourselves. Remember self-care when you're thinking of how you would like to feel. Remember that it's so much easier to just get into a practice like a self-care practice. And as you do that, I want you to remember that when you say something that you're grateful for, you smile, and when you smile, you feel something inside of your body that really lights up. But when you write 10 things grateful this week that, that you're feeling grateful for, make sure you feel how it feels inside of you so that you will understand what smile does. So a smile does a lot for you. So this last song is going to take us into a week of happiness. But in order to make someone else happy, you got to be happy yourself. So smile. So let's get this last song in and done. Smile. Yes, it's so look it's so hard to look up when you've been down, but smile anyway. Oh my God, smile anyway. So that being said, guys, that was the last song of our day. And I'm smiling because you just don't know what I have to smile right about now. So, uh, you know, that's what we do. Oh, oh, oh. So anyway, let's go on to our and prayer. And if there's anything that you have on your heart that you would like to release mm -hmm. or if there's anything you have on your heart that you would actually like to express how happy you are because remember when you talk about your happiness and what makes you happy to people that are receptive to you you're very very well mm -hmm. so that's a very good but stay away from those that ain't happy about what you say <laughs> but let's let's make sure that we have our wonderful reverend karen right now because she's sitting there ready to pray for us thank you my love karen oh. Thank you, Reverend Rosedale. This talk was absolutely beautiful. And my prayer, as I go into prayer today, I want to recognize the creator of all life as a smile, as beautiful, as kind, as the creator and the source of kindness, of self-care, and of beauty for, for and of all life. And as I take this feeling and I open myself to it, and I know, I know that there is kindness in the world. I know as I take care of myself, I am taking care of all around me. For when I am happy and I bring self-care and pleasure to myself, it goes out into my world, to other people. And the, the song that played about our country and, and the, the thing I remember about the, 
the tragedy of 9-11 and a year later I went to New York City and I walked through that area and the thing that stood out in my mind was all the love that had been given from person to person during that time. People were helping each other. People were, were bringing each other to safety. People were giving each other water. And the, the wall of remembrance was still up with all the signs and, and the signs of love and, and hope and, and care were there. And it was out of that tragedy, there was beauty. There was beauty in so many people caring about each other and bringing kindness. So self-care is about being kind to ourselves. When we're kind to ourselves, we're kind to everybody in our world to our lives and we are enough. So one song said, we are enough. We cannot be anything but enough because God has made us. So in my prayer today for each and every person here, for the people that we meet and the people we don't know is to bring kindness into the world, to be kind to, to ourselves, to be kind to yourself, to take care of yourself. And in doing that, you are spreading that kindness and that joy out into all that you meet, all that you know, into people you don't even know. And in gratitude for this beautiful service, for this beautiful message, and for all the beautiful people here, I release this prayer into the universal law. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. And Melissa Spiegler, you are phenomenal with that spot on. Spotlight, you are spot on with it. So I appreciate you, oh, more than you know. So that also is another thing. Okay, guys, let's go to the breakout rooms as Brother Allen actually takes the breakout, babe, as he actually takes the prayer request and everyone goes forth.